Vaquero Radio is sponsored in part by Caveman Barbershop with six locations valley-wide. Caveman Barbershop is your destination for fresh fades, clean cuts, and beard services. Caveman Barbershop is now open on University Drive in Edinburgh within walking distance to campus for quick cuts in between classes or touch-ups before the big game. Caveman Barbershop is open seven days a week and walk-ins are always welcome. Vaquero Radio is sponsored in part by the Center for Student Involvement Vaqueros Vote at UTRGV. Students, Election Day is November 7th. You will have the chance to vote for the special constitutional amendments and local races. The websites for Hidalgo and Cameron Counties can assist in finding your polling location. To find their polling location and sample ballot, Hidalgo County voters may visit hidalgocounty.us. Cameron County voters may visit cameroncountytx.gov. Voters not residing in Hidalgo or Cameron Counties can search their respective counties' websites for polling information. It's not just one vote. It's your vote. Good morning, vaqueros! Today is Monday, November 6th, and it is currently 66 degrees outside. We're coming to you live from our Edinburgh studio. I am Fernanda Gonzalez. And I'm Timothy Chapman. And, and this, this is, is Vaquero, Vaquero News. News! You're listening to Vaquero Radio, the Valley Student Station. According to the UTRDB Police Department, many students do not know about an app that has many features for safety and information. What is this app and what are the features it provides? Here is Timothy Chapman with the details. Campus Shield is a mobile application students can download in order to have a quicker access to university police for features such as an emergency button, anonymous reports, campus resources, and other services. Community Engagement Officer Marco Huerta said the app is available on Android and iOS. It is completely free, and to sign up, students just need to register with their name, UTRGV email, and phone number. He said one of the most used features on both campuses is the Safe Walk option, which is commonly used by students when they feel uncomfortable or unsafe walking across campus by themselves. They can press safe lock and call us and we'll send a police officer or a public safety officer to get them to their location more safely. Wherever they need to go, whether it's their vehicle, their dorm, or just to get to another building that they may need assistance with. In the event there are not enough officers available at any given moment, Huerta advises students to wait in a safe, well-lit area until an officer arrives to assist them. According to Huerta, the app not only works on university grounds. He said a staff member's child once accidentally pressed the emergency button on the app, and within minutes, local police were at her doorstep. If you are in an emergency situation and you need to get a hold of police, let's say you're somewhere else but not on campus, you can still do the emergency number and it's going to go whatever city you're in. They'll go directly to their 911 dispatch. Assistant Chief of Police Van Slusser said the University Police tracks the number of users on the app each month. Slusser said the number is low compared to the total number of students. I think we're somewhere in the neighborhood of 2,000 users right now, two or 3,000, and that's an extremely small percentage of the student population when you consider that we're in the neighborhood of 32,000 total students. Slusser said the app features may be helpful to students. There's ways that they can report crimes anonymously or text us information, send us pictures. They can monitor locations of buses as they go around the campus and they're waiting on them. For more information about the Campus Shield app, visit utrgv.edu forward slash Campus Shield. This is Timothy Chapman for Vaquero Radio. For more than 3,000 years, celebrating the ties with those who have died has been a Mexican tradition. Here is Fernanda Gonzalez with more. With more than 150 generations commemorating El Día de los Muertos, the Center for Mexican-American Studies joined in the celebration by placing an altar in the Edinburgh Campus Library. A Mexican-American Studies Club, Lucha, which stands for La Unión Chicana Hijos de Aztlán, was in charge of organizing the altar. Interdisciplinary Studies graduate student and secretary of Lucha, Kimberly Grimaldo, elaborated on the meaning behind the name of the organization. We did after, you know, Lucha after the movement that we're striving to help and preserve and voice our experiences, and as most of our community here is Mexican, Mexican-American descent. So we're trying to bring a lot of our culture, our history to events like this. And so English graduate student and treasurer of Lucha, Gaby Casas, explain how the student body was included in this event. We had um, several classes right, um, that they made their own little altars and they were able to go and put them up in this place and then also because again it's part of the culture especially living so close to the border things like that so it was feel that it was something that should have been like um, celebrated acknowledged. 
Grimaldo spoke about the process of creating the altar and how planning began in early September. And so one of the first things we did was actually making Sampasuchi flowers out of tissue paper. And so we had one meeting where we all got together, we learned how to make them, and so we also started wrapping boxes in wrapping paper. And we just started adding little things right like that. And when it came to putting the altar together, we went to the library and we set it up. Interdisciplinary studies graduate student, poet, and member of Lucha, Rolando Serna, explained the celebration of Dia de los Muertos in a poem he wrote. We celebrate our ancestors and we acknowledge them. We celebrate the dead so that the living can continue the journey they started. We recognize that without their struggles, we would not be here. And for that, we thank them. This is Fernanda Gonzalez for Baquero Radio. Modern music played by our university's talented individuals. Pete Mendoza has the details. With beautiful compositions, a large repertoire, and months of preparations, the UTRGV School of Music hosted the annual Piano Area Recital on October 29th at the TSC Performing Arts Center in Brownsville. School of Music lecturer and pianist Shoko Kinsella said this annual event is considered a showcase for students, faculty, and community pianists to take part in. The theme for this year was modern composers of the 20th and 21st centuries. She said the concert had a range of compositions. This past Sunday, we did Arbo Parrot, Kajaturian, there was some Persiketti, there was some movie music, Prokofiev, Schoenberg, Tokuyama, Ratavara. There are so many new names for the piano repertoire that we showcased. Kenneth Saxon, UTRGV School of Music Associate Professor, said there are many preparations that go into piano concerts. Saxon said in order to ensure the quality of their performance, the students practice for months once they receive the piece they will play. Graduate student Jose Hernandez said that he felt prepared for the concert. The stuff that I played was uh, six pieces from Schomburg. When I played it out there, I felt like I had fun. I felt like I did enough. He mentioned he grew an emotional connection with his piece and some of the segments even though his piece was in a tonality. Kinsella said how the concert was mainly voluntary based for both students and faculty, especially if they are interested in the theme. Yeah, it's basically volunteer basis. We faculty assign the pieces to our students, but really we see the progress of each student, and if they're really into it, then they'll pick it up. Saxon said they played a hundred years of music during their performance. It covers a lot of styles and a long time period, too. So it's over 100 years worth of music just in the pieces I'm playing. Quincela encourages people to attend events such as this, where they can express their interest not only in piano concerts, but also in many other concerts that the university offers. For more information about music and concerts, visit utrgv.edu slash music. This is Pete Mendoza for Vaquero Radio. A new Vice President for Academic Affairs has been appointed at the beginning of the semester in UTRGV. What is the story and what is the message to students? Here is Fernanda Gonzalez with the story. On June 1st, Luis Ayas, who has a doctorate in developmental psychology, was appointed as a new provost of UTRGV. Sayas has worked in higher education for more than 10 years. He tells us what was his journey to get to UTRGV. Originally from Cuomo, Puerto Rico, Sayas's father was in the military. He recalls regularly moving between states and even countries until his globe-throating days came to an end when he began his studies in economics at Manhattan College in New York City. According to Sayas, his career in social work has everything to do with his parents' influence and their givingness. Hey, my parents were always... Um, available to our neighbors to help out and to, you know, if, if there was, you know, if my mother had extra food, we'd offer it to the neighbors and they too would offer it to us. So it was always, you know, I could see this back and forth, uh, the, the kind of the, the servingness, you know, the, the servant, uh, uh, the servants that they were, social servants, if you will. Saya said his father was the one that encouraged him to pursue higher education. 
he is the first one of his family to go to college. Sayas expressed his family is very close. He said the main reason for that is due to his mother having his brothers and him pray their rosary every night. Every evening, my mom would, you know, have all six of the kids climb up on, on the bed and we would pray the rosary together. And so it was, it was, it was not just a religious event, but it was a bonding event for the family. I'm not religious anymore. I never was really, but um, it was the social event. It was the evening prayer that really kept us close. He identifies himself as a very quiet and shy person. He is a good listener. I don't think others see that. Very, I've worked very hard to make sure that, um, you know, I, I engage socially and professionally. Mm -hmm. But I think it, at the you know, at the core, I'm, I'm a pretty much a re person who prefers to be, you know, by himself, with himself. I'm a good listener. He said his listening helped him in catch up as the dean at Steve Hicks School of Social Work at the University of Texas at Austin. Instead of spending all my time pitching the school, I spent more time asking them about themselves. And in building those relationships, you know, oftentimes they became donors and generous ones at that. Sharon Brennan is the Director of Faculty Affairs at the Stip Hicks School of Social Work at UT Austin. She was Dr. Sayas's assistant and recalls her experiences working with him. He's awesome. Very, like, just laid back, easygoing funny <laughs> like when we like had our own meetings just with each other we get like once we came back to the office you know we have one-on-ones just to go over the day and everything and we would be cracking up he ruben parra cardona is a professor and the dean of global engagement at the steve hex of school of social work at ut austin he spoke about dr sias's attitude and way of thinking oh he's extraordinary you know he's brilliant so that's the first thing in like you you say, oh my gosh, this guy is thinking at 3,000 miles per hour, right? He's a risk taker and he's out of the box, an out of the box thinker. And the way he implemented his scholarship, the way he designed, implemented and disseminated his scholarship tells you about the leadership he has. During his time at UT Austin, Sayas learned the importance of public higher education in America. He expressed pride in his overseeing of the diversification of the graduate programs while at UT Austin. The School of Social Work illustrated diversity not only in racial and ethnicities, but geographically as well. As the new provost and vice president for academic affairs, Sayas oversees all academic matters including faculty and student success. Saya said he wants students to persevere in their studies and trust that they have something to offer to the world. There's going to be times. There's going to be times when you're challenged as a student, and you say, "Oh my gosh, should I be here? I need, to, I need to leave. I need another. You know, um, oh, this is going to take so long. It's four years of my life. You know, um, don't lose hope. Persevere." You're smart. You didn't get in here on a fluke. You were admitted. This is particularly for the undergraduates. You were admitted here because you have something to offer the world. Don't lose sight of that. Yes, for every student to know that they can make it. They can succeed here. This is Fernanda Gonzalez for Vaquero Radio. Healthcare is expensive, but insurance is the key. Peter Mendoza has the details. The Rio Grande Valley has historically had a low number of insured residents. To ensure their safety, health services recommend that students and faculty acquire insurance. Director of Health Service for UT Health RGV Student Health, Dr. Rick Gray, explained health insurance is a way for people to pay for medical services. According to Gray, the Valley has always had a low number of insured individuals. You know, the Valley has traditionally been underserved and under uh, is behind the uh, the national averages for folks with insurance. Gray mentioned there are many reasons why people do not have health insurance. It could be people's socioeconomic status, not being able to afford insurance, and limited funding for state and federal programs. Student Marketing Advisor for UT Health, RGV Student Health, Angelica Velasquez, says she has multiple experiences with people that are uninsured or I have experienced um, in a healthcare setting where several patients 
couldn't really afford to pay for any services that they were looking into. Um, so then they would have to rely on going across the border to go to go get the services that they need. Additionally, she said people might not get the same quality of service across the border as they would in the valley. Gray said there is a good percentage of students that are not insured. And traditionally among our students, about 25% of them are, st are, under, are either underinsured or uninsured. Gray said you never know when you might get into an accident or get ill. He said insurance would cover most of the medical expenses, especially screenings and immunizations. Velasquez expressed it's better to be safe than sorry. She gave a scenario where someone who doesn't have insurance refuses to get checked up, which leads them to getting hospitalized and having to pay thousands of dollars instead of just paying for a pill for treatment for $50. To make sure that they are getting the most out of their health insurance, she said people should look into what services the insurance offers. Velasquez encourages people to get health insurance. I would encourage people to get health insurance or to even seek health services just for preventive measures. Um, just because Correct. things can get worse, things can get more expensive. Taking advantage of your health insurance can definitely help with pre preventing even more catastrophic effects. For more information about health insurance, visit utrgv.edu slash health services. This is Pete Mendoza for Vaquero Radio. In McLean goes up and throws down a monster dunk. That fires up the UTRGV field house. And now time for Vaquero Sports. An outstanding volleyball player tells us her origins and inspiration. Here is Kevin Aleman with more. And that should be number 3,000 for Luana Emiliano. From humbling roots in Belo Horizonte to planning her legacy in Edinburgh with the Vaqueros, junior setter Luana Emiliano is a dominant player on the court. She is on her third season with the UTRGV volleyball team. She started her volleyball journey when she was 10 years old in Belo Horizonte, Minas Gerais, Brazil. Before coming to UTRGV, Emiliano played professional volleyball for two years in her hometown. In 2021, she made the decision to transfer to UTRGV to focus on her academics and and volleyball play. During this season, Emiliano broke her record of 3,000 assists, 1,000 digs, and was named Setter of the Week multiple times by the Western Athletic Conference. Emiliano talked about the fuel and motivation to earn those records. I don't earn those things by myself. I don't come and play by myself. And of course, I see myself work hard every day to get those things. My motivation is playing and doing good for my team. Head coach Todd Lowry has the privilege of coaching Emiliano. Lowry like talked about how he is able to put his trust in her on the court. You watch her play, and obviously in her physical gifts, like she doesn't mishandle ball, she can be falling down and she plays to the outside. But I think the the big thing that allows me to have a lot of trust in her is just how she sees the overall game. She plays the game to win. Emiliano shows a lot of chemistry with her teammates on and off the court. Senior middle blocker Luisa Silva dos Santos and Emiliano played club volleyball in their hometown when they were 12 years old. Santos spoke about the confidence Emiliano gives her on the court. She's different. I just feel really comfortable playing with her. I'm not scared if she always got my back. If I do a mistake or something, she tells me, of course. She's always with me, so she always makes me comfortable. The dominating junior continues to shine throughout her season. You can watch her in action at 6.30 p.m. November 9th at the UTRGV Fieldhouse when the volleyball team takes on Tarleton State. For more information, visit GoUTRGV.com. This is Kevin Alamon for Vaquero Radio. Hello Vaqueros, I'm Jan Trejo and this is the Sports Schedule of the Week. At 6.30 p.m., the UTRGV men's basketball team will go against Southwestern Adventist University in Edinburgh, Texas at the Fieldhouse. And on Tuesday, November 7th, at 6.30 p.m., the UTRGV women's basketball team will go against Texas Tech at Lubbock, Texas. And on Thursday, November 9th, at 6.30 p.m., the UTRGV volleyball team will go against Tarleton State on Edinburgh, Texas at the Fieldhouse. I'm Jan Trejo, and this has been your sports schedule of the week. And now for this week's events calendar. 
Vaqueros, this is Ruben Cintora, and these are the events for the week. Meet the Dean. Come out and have the opportunity to talk face-to-face -face with your academic college or school dean and ask them questions about different opportunities you have in your field. From 12.30 to 1.30 p.m. on Monday, November 6th at the Edinburgh Ballroom. The Korean International Student Society will be selling all types of ramen, Asian snacks, stickers, and shoe charms. Come on by and get some snacks from 3.30 p.m. to 5.15 p.m. on Monday, November 6th. From 3.30 p.m. to 5.15 p.m. on Monday, November 6th at the library. The Baptist Student Ministry in Brownsville will be having a free iced coffee afternoon from 11.15 a.m. to 1.50 p.m. Come on out and get some free iced coffee. Located at the Calvary Lawn East. And now, for this week's campus weather report. Good morning, Vaqueros. This is Joseph Zambrano with this week's Valley Weather Report. After getting a glimpse of fall weather from the recent cold fronts, we're returning to our regularly scheduled Texas weather, with highs in the 90s and lows in the 70s. Friday is our main outlier, as on that day we'll see a high of 80 and a low of 60, hopefully signaling some cooler weather in the coming weeks. We'll be seeing some partly cloudy skies for the first half of the week, interrupted by thunderstorms on Thursday and some more showers on Friday. Expect some higher levels of humidity to accompany those storms. I'm Joseph Zambrano, and this has been this week's Valley Weather Report. And that is the newscast for this week. Don't forget to check out our new column, A Night of Rain and Rhythms, Alejandro Sainz at Bert Ogden Arena by Ruben Cintura. You can also read our news story.